Hi, this is James Gardner, the Sydney Tech Geek, and I'm in the data centre today because we're going to talk about collecting data from your DCI players and using that to help you in the running or profitability of your cinema. And we're going to collect that data and then we're going to do something with it. So let's have a quick overview of a few slides and then we're going to go through a demo. And this is a free tool, so um, free tool so anyone can use this to help them make more money with their cinema. So let's go to um, some slides first. And DCI player audit demonstration. So it basically is to audit what's going on on your players. Now this has a, a number of advantages. So it's the collection and analysis of your DCI cinema player activity. So that's all logged on the player and the security log, etc. It's actually what was used a lot for um, collecting the data for your VPF. But now we're sort of opening it so you could possibly do more things with it and having a free to use tool to take advantage of that data. So let's let's have a look. Who is the target audience of this first? Obviously, any entity uh, with a general audit need on the content going to screen. Could be many people out there who may have that need. But some ideas behind that would be cinema advertising entities who want to real-time tracking of exactly what ads are playing out to the screen. This is especially relevant now, as with internet advertising, uh, this data is expected. So you know. Um, we might as well bring it along and make that sort of available to the cinema industry as well. So this tool would, uh, would allow that to happen. Uh, and I'll show you as you go through how easy it would be for if you're an advertising entity to implement this data chain. It's not that difficult. Uh, any cinema owner who wants to collect that, um, detect sort of anomalies or something. So if the player's doing something a bit strange or a lot, a lot of shows have been started or stopped or some sort of activity, you can set it up to sort of monitor for those sort of things. And specifically, if the player's doing something outside of hours and automatically email you if, if that does occur. Um, uh, support engineers, there may be a bug, a very hard bug to find. Um, and they usually, if that's a, the case, they like to know exactly what's going along when a bug occurs. And this will help them figure out because they could have a detailed look at a log and seeing what people are doing at the time that the bug occurs to see if they can find some sort of characteristics to give them a clue as to why the bug is occurring. So that's another good use model for it. Um, so how does this do that? Well, it, period it, it periodically connects to a Dolby Barco GDC or Cube DCI cinema player and downloads the logs into a local database. It allows you to then to search and look for trends in that data. And finally, it can, you can then periodically send a report based on building filters uh, and push those reports to an email or actually generate it into a JSON file or some, something more programmatic like to push it into someone else's database. So you might, for example, uh, send a report every day of every ad that's played back on all the players or, or all the players in this particular location and then send that to a database collection um, endpoint or service that the advertising agency may have. You know, it gets a bit technical there, but those people in that sort of realm should know how to deal with that sort of uh, information and the, the manual has information on how to implement that. Um, <clears throat> now let's go into the demo. Okay, so um, this is part of the cinema um, capture app that I make available uh, on, on my GitHub page. There's an installation on how to do it. You can look for the link to where to click on the more information for installing it. Um, below in the information section. But um, this is it here, and we're really going to focus on, it does a lot of other things. It's a collection of tools. We're looking at one specific tool. You know, you can actually just get this tool just for one specific tool, but there's lots of other tools in it if you want. Um, and it's called the Playout Audit. And if you go to Help, it gives you a brief manual on how it works and what it does. And it's an example of the, the JSON format here that it sends out into uh, uh, some, you know, if you're sending it to some sort of entity. Uh, and then obviously the configuration. Um, before we get into the configuration, you must also remember that, you know, you'll need to set up the screens first. So we'll just quickly go over the screen configuration section. So if you go to config and screens, obviously you can put a lot of screens in here. Um, and when you add a screen, I'll just click on one. Um, oh, one of my screens would be better. Which one's one of mine? Forbes. Um, when you add a screen, if you did add, you'd have to give the IP address and that would have a new item and then when you click on the item then you can edit all these functions. But specifically for this tool, we really need the IP address and the, and the um, type. You can actually include it or exclude it from the audit process by enabling it or disabling it here, right? 
um, uh, and uh, you want to give it a name and a screen number for the logs. You don't need the screen here anymore. I've added this, but um, uh, so the location and the screen number, so the log you can identify it in the logs, um, and that's pretty much it. And once you've got those screens configured in this way, and then you go into the audit solution and you can config. Now you can tell it how often we well, can. Uh, when you first install it, it the, the tool is actually disabled and it does nothing. None of the processes go, work in the background. It doesn't fire them. So you want to enable it. So edit, you, you enable it. Um, you can tell it for a daily or hourly. So it'll contact the players that often. A daily, a daily every, or once a day or once an hour. How long to keep the data that it logs. Uh, so 365 days a year. And if it talks to a new player, it tries to go up back up, back up to 31 days, or as far back. That's as far back as it'll look if it's seeing a new new device. And if it has logs as back as far as 31 days, it'll grab that and start downloading everything from then onwards. Because it can take some time. Sometimes some of the players aren't very efficient in that way. Um, you can clear the database if you want here, or you can basically push the update now, and it'll go out and connect to each of the each of the players it's collecting to, to a few of them now and this is doing it hourly so it didn't really have a lot to download because maybe they've done nothing in an hour um, so yeah then that collects it into the database so we can go to the search section right and then this will um, basically give us all the data that's coming out now it must be understood that certain players different models um, only certain type of data is uh, surf serviceable, or so certain type of data can only be seen. Um, so you may have to apply searches which are more um, um, more towards the sort of results you get from that particular player. Uh, I, I am going to try and inc improve that with some extra programming at some stage, but this is the first version, and you know, actually there might be some bugs. If you find them, please put them on GitHub, and uh, so I can see if there is any issues. So I can um, come up here and type a name of some of my cinemas for example and you'll see that anything with Malu cinema 1 and cinema 2 is coming up here um, and you can go through them and you can see all the, the logs coming through so commonly what you would like to do you can do some quick searches by typing into here like location and um, like SPL start right and it'll have every SPL start for that location um, and this is a quick search, but I'll get into the filters that you can make later. But the other thing I want to show you here is um, the trend identification. So you can see here that um, based on the, the, the date, I can see how many times um, the start CPL occurred uh, from the machines which I'm searching for. So if I um, go to Malu C1, Okay, that's only in cinema one so you, you can see here there was a big gap here because it was closed for some reason i think there was an outage or something uh, but generally we're getting five sessions four to five sessions a day and on the weekend we get some start earlier and get up to six sessions it depends on the length of the film etc but you can sort of see you know there's an anomaly here we were closed or something was wrong here and when we opened there was lots of testers tests going on for that particular projector um maybe because there was an error it was down for a few days there's a fault i think that's what it was it was a fault and um it had a few days to be it took a while to get fixed and absolutely when we fixed it obviously there was a lot of testing going on so there was 14 starts and then it went back into its normal um normal usage and obviously that was a holiday of some sort or i think we were closed due to a holiday and um then it's going on its normal way so you can see how you can actually quickly have a look at this tool for certain search for certain things and look for certain trends or anomalies in what may have been happening at your cinema or based on you know you could you could be monitoring you could theoretically monitor hundreds and hundreds of screens um, uh, when you get into too many you'd probably need me to optimize it for multi-threading multi -thre multi the, the downloading of the of the data but um, for hundreds of screens or so you could come in here and monitor them and also theoretically you could use this to collect it and put it into a larger database and centralize even more and more data it's really up to how you want to um, orchestrate or build the system that you want to put together um, so but the big thing here is the um, filters so this is how you filter your reports now so I, I have a filter here and basically it looks for um, this field and it must equal starts start uh, CPL uh, SPL start so if I activate that, if I activate that uh, I can clear all, all this you will see that um, if I deactivate it, this will go back to everything. And if I activate it again, 
it'll um, start um, doing that. So I could then come here and I can um, make a new filter and I could say um, location, player location starts with ma lu c1 update. So if I turn it off and on now, oops. Oh, that's right, there's a lot of Chinatown ones in there. So if I turn that on, you'll see that I've got um, Malu Cinema 1 with all SPL starts, which is, as you can see down here, which is the same data as we had before by selecting it in these fields here quickly. And I can then create a report. I give it the name of report. Um, test, or oh, demo report. No spaces and the scores. Okay, it jumps me over to the report page here, and I'll, it automatically selects it. Uh, and from here, I can then edit the report. Um, you can't. This is the this filter that the report is based on. If you change the filter, it'll change the report. So be aware of that. So it says that here. Um, if um, and we want to enable it, we want it to email us. We want it to be incremental. So incremental means it'll only send you. Um, the data that hasn't been sent before. So um, if it sends up to the fifth, the next time it sends, it'll send um, what it can find to not. So it basically will only send new data when it comes to, to light and it, and it has a successful email. If there's a failure in sending the email, it won't flag that it's sent that data. So it'll only um, remember that it sent that data when it's got a, 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 a email has sent correctly or the, the rest requests to the endpoint which is storing the data returns back with yes I've uh, a 200 status code which means it, it worked right so um, otherwise every time it's sent it it would send everything and if you had a year's worth of data that would be huge so you really want to use incremental send and know that that's what's going on but you can reset it here to make it send the whole thing again if you want um, but that's what that's for um, now this is how often to send it so this is a cron type um, reoccurring thing so it sort of goes over how it works here but so the first number is the like 15 minutes past two in the morning and I want my email one of my emails for example I uh, can describe it if you want this is a demo right then you can save that okay and then from now on um, so I can I can actually push a, a, a run now and you can actually see the backends um, sent the email as well. You can see messages coming through. Um, and so if I refresh this page, you'll actually get the fact that the last sent. So if I push it again now, run now, it won't send anything because there won't be any new data. Because I'm going to send it again. Oh, there's no new data since I last sent it, so I'll just skip it. So, but the next day, obviously, a few things would have happened. And it says there's new data, and it'll send the email. So it shouldn't generate any email, you know, that, that's so you don't get emails full of nothing every day. So that's how it works. So um, the other thing here, just quickly, if I edit this, I can go to um, an endpoint, and then an endpoint is a, a URL to a web page, like to, like to a web page, and that web page it would take something like a a, a data a data. Um, request or you'd be pushing data into it so you'd push you dump the the data that we want to send into that um, URL and that URL will do something smart like rent that would read that JSON and, and dump that JSON into a local database of an advertising agency or some sort of collection system it's just a basic JSON data structure of all the all the all the data that's in the database so there you go that's um the cinema audit tool it's free to use it's there to try and help um, cinemas uh, make more money from from the cinema in particular ways or search for errors more efficiently more cost effectively and you know it's a very specific and niche tool and it's uh, um, some people asked for it, asked for that tool so I've, I've decided to make it for the industry or for for the world to to get a hold of and to to take advantage of so there you go James Garner the Cine Set Geek bye for now